Several weeks ago, I was exploring the murky world of Cardano NFTs. So I went on JPEG store, which is the marketplace for buying your Cardano NFT, and I came across the Ape Society. I hadn't seen anything like this before. So in this video, I'm going to reveal exactly what the Ape Society is, talk about why it does, and explain why it's aspiring to become a blue chip NFT on the Cardano blockchain. My name is Brian Collins. Hope you enjoyed this profile of the Ape Society. If you do hit thumbs up and to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, please remember, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. This profile is simply for informational purposes only to help you navigate the space safely. Now, with all of that said, let's dive in to explore the Ape Society NFT. The Ape Society is a picture for profile NFT project. It's all about, you guessed it, yes, apes. What drew me to this particular project is the artwork. Now, I know that's a bit of a cliche, and don't worry, the Ape Society has some more use cases than simply aspiring to be another ape NFT. But you have to admit, these apes are pretty well drawn and are pretty creative. Look at this guy here, Maitland White. He's got a fantastic beard. What about Woodrow Best with his great pair of goggles? If you go from price high to low, you can see even more creative looking apes. So Forbes Rich, what a great name for an ape. By the way, I should add, every ape, all 7,000 of them in the collection has a name already. So not just the number that you'll get on CryptoPunks or Bored Ape Yacht Club. This guy here looks like something from the 1800s, early 1900s, and I really like the cigar that Henry Taylor has in his mouth. In other words, the apes in the Ape Society picture for profile project look really creative if it's a distinctive look and feel that's unlike any other NFT up there. To be honest, the only similarity that I could see between this and other NFT projects, at least from the design, is the fact that it's an ape. It could be a strength or it could be a weakness. Is the market ready for another blue chip ape collection? Who knows? The Ape Society actually comprises an entire ecosystem of NFTs and their associated creations and use cases. So basically, when you buy an ape, you get access to a decentralized autonomous organization DAO or Discord where you can vote on the future direction of the project. You can also purchase a cabin for an ape, which I'll show you in a moment. And if you purchase a cabin and an ape, you can mint a frame for free. And then you can stake your ape uh, inside of your frame in your cabin and earn society. Society is the proprietary token within the ape ecosystem. And you can use society, you can sell it back uh, to ADA and sell that back to Fiat if you want. But it's not actually meant as something that's going to be or will earn you money over the long term. It's actually meant as a token that you will use within the Ape Epo system, for example, for a potential game and for also some of its other potential future projects which are, are in development. So there's much more here planned for the Ape Society than I can cover in a single video. But suffice to say, if you're interested in the Apes, it's a picture for profile project. There are 7,000 of them. You can purchase a cabin for your Ape and stake it within a frame to earn society. With that said, this is what the roadmap for the Ape Society looks like. So the project launched in the spring of 2022, so a few months before the NFT bear market. There's a society token airdrop on Cardano for Ape holders. We were also able to preview what cabins looked like. And then HD or full high definition assets were released for all of the apes. And the artwork really is fantastic. This is what drew me to the project. You were able to mint your cabin and then within the summer, they built out a functionality for staking your ape. Uh, which was recently launched. And within the autumn of this year, there are some more plans for society within the ecosystem that I've shown you a few moments ago, which will be launched. And you'll also be able to interact with your cabin as well. So I'll show you some examples in a moment of what that looks like on the website. Before I do that, what drew me to the Ape Society is how well it's explained rarity for this project. Often when I'm trying to figure out rarity for a project, I would simply go to OpenSea and use the search bar to navigate all of the different traits and properties to figure out what's rare and what's not rare. But the Ape Society has excelled at creating documentation which you get access to once you join the Discord. So you can see here that all of the various hats that your ape can potentially wear and how rare they are. You can see all of the eyes, so you have a monocle, safety goggles, wrap glasses and so on. You can see all of the body clothes, zombie, doublet, chainmail all of the ears, head, accessories, weapons, facial hair, and so on. But what I actually particularly liked is all of the different classes. So depending on what class of ape you own, you can pick one up on the floor, or you can pick up a rarer class. It's more or less rare, and it will earn more or less society token. So the rarest apes are the nobles. They comprise 1% of the 7,000 apes in the collection, followed by royal advisors, military officers, 
merchants, explorers, artists, and then craftsmen. So I went ahead and picked an ape, uh, who is a craftsman, off the floor, because I wanted an affordable entry point into this NFT collection. That said, you could go ahead and pick one up that's not off the floor. That said, when I was researching the Ape Society, I found many of them weren't listed because it looks like a lot of Ape Society holders are actually staking their apes. Over the past few months, the Ape Society has had quite a run up in floor price. So it's currently trading at just under 8,000 Cardano or ADA. So that works out at approximately just under $4,000. It's nearly doubled in price uh, over the past few weeks. And if you go back to just before the NFT bear market kicked off uh, at the start of May, you can see that the Ape Society was trading uh, at approximately 3,000 ADA. There was a slight dip uh, since this particular runoff. Now I mentioned about Cabin. So Cabin was a free airdrop for Ape Society holders, but you can pick these up on JPEG store as well. They currently have a floor price of 535 Cardano or ADA. Uh, they've had a run up from 200 ADA uh, from just a couple of short weeks ago. So this is what the cabins look like. Uh, the idea is that your ape will live inside of the cabin. And of course, there are different types of cabins with different rarity scores. Having a rarer cabin means that you can potentially earn more society. So if you go to the properties section, I can change the size of my cabin uh, from a cottage, which are the ones on the floor, to a chateau, which is the biggest cabin, I gather. So these are quite a bit more expensive. In fact, 10 times more expensive. And you can purchase these and you can have several apes living in your chateau. So I really do like the creative, like these actually have addresses as well and postcodes. So usually with an NFT collection, you'll just simply see a number for the NFT. The lore is really well quite built out with the Ape Society. When I'm evaluating an NFT, I also like to look at the website. I know many NFT projects like to launch based on hype on Twitter and Discord, but I like to see that they've invested in a good site, which demonstrates that they could potentially be here for the long term. So this is the Ape Society site. As you can see, it communicates clearly that it's about the art, the community, and the ecosystem, which I described a few moments ago. It explains that there are 7,000 characters uh, in the collection. You can see examples here on screen. Uh, and then you can read all about the lore uh, behind these barbaric apes. And you can discover that the first ape was called Giambiano de Medici. Now, I reckon that could be a play on de Medici, who is an NFT collector on Twitter, which was actually a moniker for Snoop Dogg or somebody related to Snoop Dogg. So it's probably a play on NFT culture. You can also read all about the families. So there are families uh, within the 7000 Apes collection. And then there's a video explaining exactly what cabins are and what they do. And you can also read about the use cases for society, which is the proprietary token. So basically, there are 700 million soci uh, society tokens. You can earn society once you stake your ape inside of a cabin you can use this to buy and upgrade frames and basically once you upgrade your frame you can earn even more society but the ape society has also partnered with other nft projects on cardano and i understand that you will be able to stake those other projects within your frame as well haven't seen anything like that on an ethereum nft whereby you'll use an nft from a different project to stake it and earn rewards you can also sell your society uh, for decorative items for your cabin. There's potential for airdrops. There's going to be some merch released at some point. Uh, and then you can also see that they've kept some of the supply for airdrops for the community and also for upgrades. The 7,000 apes in the eight society are broken up into 35 different families and eight classes. I'll explain what these are. So firstly, let's consider the classes because this is probably what you need to know about most if you're going to get into the project or simply follow it. So the eight classes are craftsman, artist, explorer, merchant, military officer, royal advisor, noble, and king. So you can read all about them on the Ape Society website, or if you simply want to see what they look like, just go to jpeg.store, select class, and pick your particular ape in question. So I picked up a craftsman, so that's basically one that I bought off the floor uh, some time ago. So these are basically the cheapest apes that you can get in the Ape Society, and the most amount of these exist. On the other hand, the most expensive ones to get are nobles. Only 70 of these, uh, exist within the 7,000 piece collection. And you can see here that they have a crazy floor price, 208,000 Cardano for Bonnet de Medici and 333,000 for Jarvis de Medici. These are part of the Medici family and I'll explain these in a moment. But first, let's go back to the classes. So basically, depending on what class you get, it has different rewards. So the craftsmen are the builders of the ape society and they can build non-frame items within the ape ecosystem. Uh, for their cabin and they can sell these for society which is their proprietary token then artists uh, can receive one free frame for their cabin and they have a base multiplier of 1.15 
for staking. So that basically means that you are in society when you stake your artist ape. Uh, explorers uh, get a 50% discount on frames, so a different reward system and a 1.35 multiplier. Uh, merchants receive 2% of revenue from non-frame items. Here's a colorful looking merchant here and a base multiplier of 1.45. Military officers can claim distant lands and receive free items and loot. So basically airdrops and whitelists and a base multiplier of 1.7. Royal advisors uh, receive a staking reward for other apes. So you could have a royal advisor with a craftsman of 1.2 and then they have a base multiplier of 2.35. Nobles base multiplier of seven and then kings, 1% uh, of all rewards to their respective family, because these are the rarest apes. So as you can see, the reward system is quite complex. It's also quite thought through. So that's the strength and the weakness. There really is differentiators between each of the different classes, but you do need to spend a bit of time digging in to see which one you want to get. You can afford, and the question is, will people actually do that uh, outside of the ape ecosystem? You could read all about what the Ape Society is and what it does on its light paper. So this is accessible by the Ape Society website via its Discord and also at this URL here. Basically, it describes that the vision is to become the ultimate ticket for Web3 enthusiasts, professionals, and collectors on the Cardano blockchain. And it's going to be a destination where holders can reap the benefits of all rewards of a decentralized community. It talks about how it's uh, pursuing branding, decentralization, DeFi, personal and professional development, and community. So if you go to the Ape Society section, you can read about the classes, which I've covered a few moments ago, but you can also see the family tiers. So the, the Medici family is the rarest family within the Ape Society, uh, and these are the other families uh, sorted by rarity. So you can use this to decide what family you want to join, and you could potentially pick up several apes from the same family and have them all living within your cabin uh, on an address and then staking them for society. Um, you can read all about the society token uh, and its economics. Basically, it describes that this is a utility token that can be used for all transactions within the ecosystem, which was launched in April of 2022. And you can earn society by staking your apes, um, by staking your non-apes from other approved projects, by purchasing a craftsman ape and building 3D furniture, uh, and also for some other potential uh, use cases that haven't yet been revealed. And then you can use your society um, to upgrade your frame, to earn more as a medium of exchange within the ape ecosystem, uh, and also to interact with landmarks as well. Haven't investigated landmarks as much. And you can uh, sell your society back to Ada uh, using, I think it's Minify, which I talked about there a few moments ago. You can also read about the token economics, the staking rewards and so on uh, on the late paper uh, site and what they're planning to do uh, with the society token. So most of it is allocated for staking rewards, 65%, with the rest for projector rewards, the DAO, airdrops, liquidity, the team, community initiatives, uh, and so on. This is the ape that I bought. His name is Landon Rich. And I was able to uh, mint a free frame when I bought Landon, and now I'm staking him to earn society. I also own another NFT, Ape Ada Invaders UFO. It's not worth very much, but I could potentially stake this in the frame as well. I have not done that yet, and I've no rewards to claim because I only did this just before the video. If I click on the view perks uh, section, you can also see all of the perks that the different classes have. So again, I only have a craftsman, so I have the entry ape into this particular collection. If you're interested in picking up an ape, I have another video on the channel where I explain how to purchase NFTs on Cardano. But a quick refresher, you'll need to set up a wallet using a service like Typhon, pretty similar to MetaMask. If you can set up on MetaMask, you can set up on Typhon. Don't forget to keep your seed phrase safe and you can link this to your hardware wallet or ledger device. Then you'll need to transfer some ADA or Cardano to it. And then once you've done that, you'll just simply pick an ape up off the floor or based on class or based on family. And then you're gonna to connect to Typhon Wallet on JPEG store. It can take a few minutes for the transaction to go through, depending on what's happening with the Cardano blockchain. Then once you have your ape, you can go ahead and see if there's a frame eligible for minting, or if not, you can just go ahead and buy one for some Cardano. And then you can stake your or stake your ape inside of the frame to start earning society. You can also verify then on Discord to access the DAO and to keep up what's happening with the project. So this is the Ape Society Discord. There are just under 20,000 members, which is quite big for Cardano NFT. Uh, I found out there's less scammers in Cardano uh, Discord communities versus Ethereum. That's not to say you shouldn't practice good safety and obviously use a hardware wallet and don't share your seed phrase or respond to direct messages. But the people in the public general channel tend to be from the project and tend to be quite helpful. 
There's a section where you can access an FAQ all about the project. So there's much more detail about staking, society and frames. If you're so interested, you can use this to access the official links for staking uh, your ape if you go ahead and pick one up. And you can also access, access this channel here, which has updates about the uh, roadmap. So this latest uh, roadmap image was published uh, at the start of October. Um, you can also buy and sell over the counter, although I personally prefer using marketplaces. Uh, and you can access some various links to community tools uh, as well. The Ape Society, once you're a holder, you also get access to alpha research for Cardano NFTs if you fancy learning more about the space. Uh, you can view Ape art, see what people are doing with their pictures or with their NFTs. Um, you can also uh, access a section for discussing uh, other alpha within the space. And there's also an option um, for the DAO or Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Basically, this is a place where you can vote on the direction of the project. You can read about what's happened to it in the past. You can get up to date on proposals and ask other APE holders about the project as well. So I did take part uh, in some conversations uh, with some APE holders uh, on this particular DAO chat. So I asked one particular APE holder uh, all about this video to get some feedback on it and I got a couple of replies. And I also asked them where I could pick up society because they didn't see it on a typical crypto marketplace and they explained that I should use MinSwap. So it's quite a helpful place to be if you want to learn more about Cardano uh, NFTs. And you can also of course go in whitelist for other NFTs on the Cardano blockchain too. What struck me about it is the creative direction. The creative direction for this project is unlike anything I've seen with other NFTs. It really is a distinctive look despite the fact that it's an ape. They're creative and clearly somebody has invested a lot of time and energy in creating these particular picture for profiles. Some of them are quite fun. Look at this guy here, Clifford Davis. That brings me to the lore. That's the other key selling point of this NFT. It's really well thought out. The fact that each NFT has a name, that the cabins have addresses and so on, means it's something that you know community can get behind and feel a bit more sentimental about. <clears throat> the array of potential use cases for the Ape Society is quite good. Uh, I like the fact that they've partnered up with other NFTs on Cardano and that you can stake and earn society. Um, perhaps the only downside is the roadmap uh, can be a little bit ambiguous and difficult to figure out, particularly what all of the potential future use cases are. The other con that I could see is, is the NFT space as a whole ready for another blue chip NFT? That's an ape, no matter how creative, that could potentially be a hinder. And also I would ask about onboarding as well. So if you're watching this, chances are you're familiar with NFTs, you know how to buy one and so on. But there is an extra hurdle to buying an NFT on Cardano. And of course you have the risk of buying an NFT compounded by the fact that you're buying an NFT on the Cardano blockchain, which is more unproven than the Ethereum blockchain for NFTs. That said, it is a fun and creative project, which has had a massive run up despite the current NFT bear market. And it's certainly one that I'm going to be watching closely because I think it's indicative of the health of NFTs on the Cardano blockchain. So do you own Ape Society? Are you interested in it? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you'd like to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.